Just want to move on though and talk about the qualifier draw. And McGinley joins us on the line. Um, and uh, let's start with your own county, Tyrone, away to Carlo. It's not the worst draw that you could have had. It's um, also not the most straightforward, given that uh, Carlo are effectively playing like Ulster opposition at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. Carlo with Stephen Poacher's coaching, uh, it's, it's well documented now. They've, they've assumed a full-on, uh, apparently Ulster style, although you, you, you could discuss the merits of that tag uh, all day long. But yeah, difficult one for Tyrone. Carlo have proven to be very difficult to break down. Even Dublin last year struggled with them. Uh, so it's tricky for Drone, but looking at the other teams that you could have pulled, it's maybe not the worst one. Carlo were still in Division 4 this year, so they can't have become a top-tier team overnight. They certainly are much more competitive than they have been, but Drone have to be, if Drone are, are considering themselves a top-tier side at all, they have to be taking care of Carlo. One of the things about um, the aftermath of a game like the Mead game is that we tend to, for whatever reason, overreact to, oh, well, you know, if Tyrone can only uh, beat Mead after extra time and in such controversial circumstances, then who knows what the truth of them is. But actually, if you look back down through the years, loads of great teams have struggled in the qualifiers. So um, I guess the most important thing and the only important thing really is that Tyrone are still standing after the Mead game. And sure, only have to look to last year with Mayo. How many times did Mayo struggle through them early rounds of last year, and yet they hit, they hit the performance level in the Laren final? That if they had performed like that in the earlier rounds, would have just obliterated their their opposition. So teams tend to most normal teams, Dublin, I'll set Dublin aside, but most normal teams tend to play roughly at the level of their opposition, maybe a few years above, and enough to get through. I've been through, I've won two Irons through the back door and plenty of them early rounds were pretty poor, pretty average performances and yet when you proceed to the big rounds and suddenly the year ends in glory, everybody looks back with rose tinted glasses about all them performances and there's plenty of rubbish performances in that. So for Tyrone coming through that extra time victory when they were really put their in the collar, that actually strengthens Tyrone, I would have no doubt about it and they were well weakened, they were missing three or four regulars as well so uh, for Tyrone it was a matter of job done unconvincing absolutely but in the qualifiers that just doesn't even matter yeah okay the the rest of the qualifiers um tipperary against mayo is probably the pick of them because we had high very high expectations for tipperary as a team who have forwards who understand exactly what it means to be competitive over the last couple of years and yet this probably is not the draw that they wanted they wanted to probably uh, just get back on the road and, and um have a confidence boosting win before they faced one of the big guns yeah i'd agree Jer. i think tipperary that the, the, the question for these teams that are that are coming up, the, the famous Carlo Rising tag, uh, Tipperary very much on that on that crest of that wave. Now that either does one of two things, and unfortunately, most commonly, they tend to bounce off the glass ceiling rather than break through. My feeling looking at Tipperary is maybe maybe, maybe they've reached that, that that limit. Like they're, they're they're doing fantastically well. If we think about the resources and where they're coming from, you couldn't you couldn't help but give them huge credit. Uh, but Mayo, Mayo is difficult and Mayo showed last week that there is a ruthless streak. They, they don't intend to be limping through the qualifiers this year, maybe as, as they did last year. Uh, but Tipperary will be a big step up from the Limerick, uh, from, from, from Limerick's level. But you, you just feel timing ways and just the, the, the momentum in, in the Tipperary camp will have lost it. And a lot of their good results were built on that momentum. Uh, so it's, it's, a, it's a difficult clash for Tipperary and you'd have to favour Mayo. We were chatting here a little bit about um, what level of hope uh, supporters of Armagh and Kildare would have after coming through the first round of the qualifiers when defeat would have been an absolute disaster for both of them. Can either of these two teams put together any kind of a run, Kildare at Longford and Armagh or at Sligo in the next round? Yeah, prob probably looking at the four, what, what I would see is the four big hitters in, in that draw, Mayo, Monaghan, uh, Tronin, Kildare, being, being the four Division One teams this year. Kildare, the toughest draw in Longford, and, and, and Longford up there is, is a difficult tie. Plenty of teams have fallen shy and found that an exceptionally difficult task, including ourselves, including Kerry. So that's a difficult one for Kildare, but they have got that win on, under their belt. A monkey off their back, 12 defeats in a row is now gone. It's a, de a decent performance again, Derry, because Derry, whilst they played very poorly in the league, Derry, whenever they have a full team out, actually have a decent enough team and they played well in spells, but, but Kildare put them to the sword well. So uh, if Kildare have rediscovered a bit of a mojo, they'll, they'll go up there to Longford with, with a bit of confidence and, and that'll change them. So you would still have to favour Kildare, although going to Longford's the most difficult one. Armagh, again, hugely disappointing again for Mana. But a, a decent win again, again Westmeath, although to be fair, a couple of their goals were, were very lucky and they've lost Ethan Rafferty. 
with an injury too, who would be a key player for them. So it's not straight forward for them, but Sligo aren't really pulling up any trees this year. Uh, so for me, it would be Armand and Kildare would be the two favourites in the entice. One of the other big stories in the weekend, and we were talking about this that went very much under the radar, was the absolute quality of performance that Donegal put out. Now, granted, we don't know how good Down are, and they haven't been great, and there's been a few of these performances in their system over the last couple of years. But notwithstanding that... Uh, Donegal had a man sent off 10-15 minutes in when they had only four points on the board they go on and kick another 218 roughly and they've had this style of play with the hard running um, they haven't had it during the league when Michael Murphy was, was fully fit now he looks completely fully fit again and this is a team who really are going to cause a lot of trouble for anybody Yeah, absolutely I think uh, both both Calvin and Down, I suppose for, for me, them ties Calvin and Down off the Clare are, are exceptionally even, lead them out as well. Calvin and Down, Calvin uh, done really well in the league, poor again Donegal, but, but came, came, came through a good, uh, a, a good win yesterday, and that'll start setting their momentum again. But them two teams are, are very similar levels. Donegal were phenomenal, and that. Last year, Down were doing really well, had built good momentum, and then Toronto obliterated it, oh, wrecked them in the in Ulster final. And Down simply didn't come back after that. So they've got a similar trimming yesterday against Donegal, uh, where they were completely flat. Uh, and so, can they come back from that? I think because of the one week gap, I think if the, the favour, if in doubt in these matches, has to co- go with the team coming in with a bit of momentum. And in this case, it'll be Calvin. Are Donegal genuine All Ireland contenders after their performances? Is it too early for us to be talking like that? Funny, I was, I was watching on TV and the exact same thoughts were going through my head because they have serious, serious quality. Uh, and then the, the, the men that come off, they bring on Mark McHugh, they bring on Ward McNeilis, they bring on Keane Mulligan, three top players as well. So they are exceptional. But Throne blitzed through Ulster last year. I've got a feeling Donegal might do the same. We'll see how they do it again for Man, but they might well do the same. But Nobody really, they haven't been truly tested against the top team yet, so uh, we'll see, but they have they have huge potential. They're an exceptionally exciting team, and it's not built on our counter-attack anymore with Donegal. It's built on a serious, talented forward line, so exciting times when you're watching Donegal. And the great stuff. Thanks a million for joining us this morning.